up. But. How far up the bluff do you want me to start? Just start right across? Yeah. All right. All right. Hi, guys. Blake. Phil, Levi, and Jackson here today with Lily's Landing Resort and Marina on Upper Lake Tanicomo. It is July the 8th, and we are going to do the one cast for you today. Today, we are just going to, we're back and we just backed out of the dock, and we are going to start right across the dock on the bluff here. Uh, they've had the water up at four units for the last four hours or so, and it is just now starting to drop. They were supposed to shut it down to two units at eight o'clock, and that was just about 20 minutes ago. So we're starting to see some of the drop down here, down lake, and uh, <clears throat> we're going to fish this bluff on down a ways today. Today we are going to throw a assortment of Signature Series jerk baits. This is kind of that last hour of light. This is one of the best times to be out here doing it. Phil's got on a Rainbow 606 model. I'm going to throw the Rainbow, but I'm going to throw it in the 110. And Levi's going to start off with a 110 French Pearl. And we're going to give it a shot here on this bluff we haven't I haven't fished this bluff in I don't know, a couple months but any any bluff bank is gonna be a spot where a brown trout could be could be potentially and I've heard of people even way down the lake on those bluffs throwing deeper diving crankbaits and jerk baits catching browns all the way down there so uh, this is probably about good. Blake's back there. Do you want me to switch spots? Or uh, you want the yeah. front? Yeah, yeah. Since we're talking, it's kind of weird. <laughs> I'll just narrate. So essentially, we uh, gonna get just far enough away from the bank so that we can work that first 20 yards off the bank nice and successfully, but we still want to get our baits in as close as we possibly can to that bluff because generally the browns and even the bigger rainbows that I've caught are usually sitting right there against the edge of that bluff, usually on one of the drop offs or behind a big rock or a big stump or a log laying down along the bank there. Ooh, don't do that. And we're just trying to give these baits a nice sporadic action, something to trigger the fish to attack. Oh, did you miss him? I missed him. Hey, get it, go. Uh, once again, I was on closing shift today, so by the time I got here, uh, all the guides were already done, so I didn't really get to hear too many fishing reports. Uh, I know that Captain Dwayne and Captain Blake Harris both had night trips last night, and... Uh, I believe they caught two over 20 on Dwayne's boat. There's a fish right in there. Hey, they're liking the French pearl on the bluff. That's an aggressive one. And I believe they caught four over 20 last night on Blake's boat. Uh, I put a pair of pliers on the dash. Huh?
get one more bite, I'm switching to a French pearl. <laughs> That is another that is another one of those colors though that even though you may not catch as many fish that white color that bone color is a way to target those aggressive fish or those trophy fish It's been a while since we had the floodgates on um but we did see Whenever Levi and I went bass fishing, what, a week and a half ago, yeah. we did see some schools of shad farther down the lake. So I'm not going to say it's impossible that they, there couldn't still be schools up here, but. There is a, a log out here from the Lazy Valley someplace. It kind of goes up like this. Yeah. We're really starting to slow down already. I don't know if we got caught in a slow spot here or... If the water's moving real slow, I almost kind of like to take the trolling motor and point it downstream and speed the boat up just a little bit. That way you're kind of constantly working a new spot on the bank. No, I like casting a little forward when I work my jerk baits. Oh, they're very active. Uh, I think I caught a piece of moss there. Cast a little more forward. I didn't get a chance to talk to Dwayne and ask him how his afternoon trip went. Did you talk to him, Phil? Yeah, they took the chest from 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock so they tore him up. Hmm. Well, I know that the day before that, he said they were up there doing that same thing. Just really long leader. I'll tell you another good place to throw these jerk baits is if you float in between those docks and just blast them up as far as you can behind those docks. Put them in there. Dock. Any of the docks. The docks up, uh, you know, coming down the Fall Creek side, those personal docks over there, these docks right here, the docks down below the Cooper Creek flat. Than just a fluke, we get one. <clears throat> a 
Last night, me and my friend Char. Oh, there was a fish chasing that. Which one? Yours or mine? Mine. Last night, me and Charlie were out, and we actually did better last night once we got to Andy Williams's flat. Yep. Bluff's always trying to suck me in here. If you're really out here targeting a brown trout, you kind of want to keep that bait moving the whole time. They generally hit it when it's moving. And if it pauses for even just a touch too long, they get, they turn off of it pretty quick. But if you don't care what you catch, then I do recommend throwing a one or two second pause in there because those rainbows are more likely to hit it on the pause. A sword fight? I don't. They're kind of expensive swords not and they're really rod, fragile. <laughs> really not with this rod. Good hit.
Oh, I'm gonna get stuck on a tree. Ooh, I got over it. We're coming up on the pump, well, I don't know, what do they call this? The pump house for C of O. Well, I know we call the one above our dock the pump house too, right? <coughs> yeah. Ooh, what's up? Oh my gosh. Well, I've gotten a few touches here. It still amazes me how they can touch that bait with three treble hooks on it and not get hooked. I can't even look at it without getting hooked. <laughs> Let's see, you put it in the net and it gets hooked. I'm out. So, closer down to the end of this bluff where it kind of turns into that island down there, that little point turning into the flat is where we've done really well during the last two springs throwing these 110 plus ones, catching some brown trout. And all along the flat, all the way down to the other end of it. It's also a really good idea to stand as close to the edge of the boat as you can. That way you don't smack your really expensive rod against it and put a crack in it.
When was the last time it rained? There's quite a bit of water coming off that bluff. A little squirrel fishing. If you're not doing that every once in a while, you're not fishing in there good enough. No? Yeah. Or you got way better aim than me, I don't know, one of the two. Yeah. We are just now even with Cooper Creek Resort, or their marina. on my lure. I've never figured out why midges like to pile up above your head. Really? Huh. They're only attracted to me and Blake. Well, that is interesting and I've always wondered that. So as if you've ever been out here fishing and wondered why the midges will form a stream above your head, it's because they're attracted to the car carbon dioxide that we give off. Were you just going to break that off? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Cause was, only because I knew the guy that makes them. Oh. I heard he's on vacation. Wrong guy. Uh oh. It's a different guy. I see. <laughs> I'm trying to get us down to that corner down there in a hurry. I feel like that's a good spot. Okay, coming right up.
turn the camera out of this angle. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to speed this process up since the water is moving pretty slow down here now. And we're going to work our way down here to the waterfall and try to fish this little cul-de-sac in here. No, I'll turn that a little bit more this way now. A little too far. This way. There you go. Try controlling the bait here like Buddy does. Hey, I don't know what Buddy was using last night, but they had a big limit of big walleye off of Bull Shoals. Really? Yeah. Okay. Right, let's start right here. Yep. All right. When Rob Dickerson stayed here last spring, I think just about every single one of those brown trout he caught were right off the tip of this point. They caught a lot up in here. All down mm. here. I don't know, something about the way the area right here in the water converges with that flat must be something that they like. Oh, I just know I'm going to get hooked in that tree. That's what I'm afraid of. It's all right. No risk, no reward. Huh. <laughs> I guess I ain't half that bad. I already hooked the tree once. This little spot is a great spot to come down here and <clears throat> throw jigs or anchor off over there on that wood and throw back with a night crawler or power bait or a minnow. This little pocket in here usually holds some fish.
Do you have a bite? Yeah. Up above it right there. I'm starting to get a little worn out. Oh, oh, there's uh -oh. a fish. Oh my gosh. Oh, is he still on there? No. Is he on? on He's on her. Oh my gosh. He was running so fast I couldn't feel him. Give me a net. Nice rainbow. Jeremy got him both. I know. Don't worry, I won't knock your fish off. <laughs> <laughs> I just knew that was coming. Where's the flyer? Is that? Feel here, right quick. Uh, right here. I got him. Yeah, it was an aggressive little rainbow. A, got a belly. Nice Beautiful. Very aggressive. He was running so fast I couldn't keep up with him. I thought he lost it twice. Well, you want to keep going? You want to oh, call a it a day longer. there? A little longer. All right. Well, we're going to go a little longer. I got my first bite. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get us back out. <laughs> you good. I just happened to try to step about the time you were moving. We're headed towards the uh the bank here. Headed towards the middle. I don't know if it was the middle so much or the back. So we are out here. Oh. Let's do that again. I thought it was a brown the way it was running like that. There was another one. Sometimes they hit it so hard it just stops you dead in your tracks. Gosh. Listen. Oh yeah. And you messed my jerk bait up on that bite too. that we're on right now is what we call the Cooper Creek flat and it actually goes for well, a few hundred yards it stays pretty average the same depth all the way across here that can be a really good spot for fish Do up. Right. Right in that little cutout.
flattened out. Last cast. This is old blind one. into my last cast. I don't think I got any bites. That's normal for me on dirt bike. <laughs> <laughs> well, we thank you guys for watching today. Like and share us on Facebook and we will be out here to do it for you again tomorrow. Thanks guys.